They ginned up a false conspiracy. They marketed it aggressively. They continue to market it to this day. And we believe that the motivation behind all of it is money. And that's why we call it a grift. Back in April, about a year after they first filed the lawsuit, St. Luke's attorney Eric Stidham, or Stidham, excuse me, sat down with us to explain why the health system was taking such an action. Why do they want to sue Ammon Bundy, his campaign for governor, and his People's Rights Network? Why did they want to sue Diego Rodriguez, his Freedom Man Press, and his Freedom Man PAC? Why were they not just content with letting the whole thing go away? This whole thing stems from Bundy and Rodriguez's claim Rodriguez's grandson was kidnapped by Child Protective Services under the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare and St. Luke's medical staff in March of 2022. They then staged several protests outside the hospital in Boise, causing them to lock down for a couple of hours and divert patients. They then allegedly doxed St. Luke's staff with many of their followers, sending threatening, threatening messages online and directly to the hospital to those staff members. The lawsuit was filed in May of last year a legal proceeding both Bundy and Rodriguez failed to participate in, failed to respond in a timely manner for documents, failed to show up to the hearings or depositions, failed to offer any sort of defense. A default judgment was issued in April, and the trial to decide damages began earlier this month. And after two weeks of testimony, the jury came back with a verdict last night. More than $52 million awarded to St. Luke's, its CEO, one of its doctors, and one of its nurses. $26.5 million to account for the economic losses and emotional distress, compensatory damages. $26 million to punish and discourage it from happening again, punitive damages. Back in April, Eric Stidham told us the point of the lawsuit was to get Bundy and Rodriguez to appear in court under oath to expose the reality of what occurred, to present the grift to a jury. Three months later, despite not getting the defendants in front of a jury, we asked Mr. Stidham if they accomplished their goal. We had, we, we had that opportunity. And what was important about this trial was exactly what you said. It's not just about some isolated statements made that were false against the clients. Is as presented to the jury, it was a very calculated corporate attack that caused, you know, initially the 700 people or so, many armed to come shut down the hospital and then what has occurred since then, and to be honest, is still occurring today, which is this ongoing effort by Mr. Bundy and Mr. Rodriguez and associates to continue to attack St. Luke's and the plaintiffs. As an attorney, as St. Luke's attorney, mm -hmm. and I've seen the statement from St. Luke's, obviously they're relieved, but this was significant for them. Yeah. And the, and the verdict means something. It means a lot. I mean, what it, what it means to St. Luke's, and I think what it should mean to other people in the community, is this business model that Ammon Bundy and Diego Rodriguez pursued, which is to generate these conspiracies, um, false, f create these false targets in order to generate publicity for themselves and in turn money, is just a business model that can't be accepted, especially when it results, as it did in this case, to putting so many people at risk of violence. 26.5 in compensatory, is that correct? And, and then 26 yes. roughly in punitive damages. That's correct. It's a lot of money. It is. Do you expect to see any of it? Yes, I think St. Luke's is gonna pursue all legal means uh, to recover this. Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Bundy have been open in their YouTube statements that they're trying to hide their assets. But every indication is, uh, are that they have very considerable assets, and uh, St. Luke's, I'm sure, will take all steps to get it collected. So how does Mr. Rodriguez feel about this outcome? In an email sent before the verdict, he said, I will obviously appeal this fraudulent lawsuit and take it as far and as high as it needs to go in order to get it in front of a judge who is not bought and paid for by leftists and their ideology. As for Mr. Bundy, a little less verbose. In a text exchange Monday night, he offered this. I'm embarrassed for the court. This confirms everything I have said, and I am glad I did not participate and legitimize the process. So I asked him, do you plan to appeal or do you plan to pay? And he said, neither. Mr. Bundy, there's no basis for him to delegitimize the process. St. Luke's followed the laws. 
they presented evidence in a court under oath in front of a jury. Um, I think the fact that St. Luke's pursued that route is an affirmation of our system and that it works. The fact that the system continues to work even when somebody like Mr. Bundy tries to opt out of the process is a testament to the strength of the system. Okay, so then logistically, how does it work? How does somebody get that kind of money from somebody who claims to have no assets? It's, um, it's a typical process to go through collection. There'll be efforts to discover um, what assets Mr. Bundy really has. So the law has mechanisms to address these situations, and I fully expect St. Luke's to be committed to pursuing all legal means at recovery. I'm hopeful that he would um, just accept the situation and pay up um, as required, but if he doesn't, there's a variety of mechanisms. There are, there are liens, there's fraudulent conveyance lawsuits, there's just efforts to uncover any concealed assets. And you know, our understanding is Mr. Bundy, whether he contends he has them or not, controls some very significant assets. So this by no means means this is over, and there are still civil arrest warrants out for both Bundy and Rodriguez in Ada County. Bundy's was issued back in April. Rodriguez, well, his was issued in June. Both are for contempt of court, not for just not showing up for the lawsuit. According to Stidham, they were issued for allegedly intimidating witnesses. Bundy's warrant is still up to the Gem County Sheriff Donnie Wonder to serve, and one would assume should Rodriguez show up in Ada County at any time from his home in Florida, well then he would then be served.